when energy companies talk, when they talk about breakthrough technology, most of the time, historically, it amounts to incremental gains, just wrapped in corporate speak. But what ExxonMobil is doing with petroleum coke in the Permian Basin isn't that kind of news. It's a fundamental shift in how the world's largest crude oil producer is extracting oil from formations that conventional wisdom says are already maximized. I'm Mark Roach, and this is FutureWise Energy, an independent upstream energy platform where I share my views that were developed across 30 years of operating in oil and gas fields, executing transactions across cultures, continents, reservoirs all over the world, people all over the world. Now today, we're looking at a technology that may and probably is reshaping how investors think about shale reserve longevity and the competitive positioning of integrated majors like Exxon Mobil versus pure play independence. Now, although my mantra is typically small is beautiful, you must admit when an advantage is created by one of the big boys in the industry, implementing this in now in small scale applications regionally, of course, is actually something Exxon Mobil is good at. Small is Beautiful was introduced to me by two, ironically, two top level um, Exxon and Saudi Aramco mentors of mine, particularly Lou Powers back in the early 1990s. Now, it happens to be one of the advantages, Small is Beautiful, that Exxon Mobil applies to their operations culture. Now, although as, as an artist myself, that wasn't for me in the long term, but nonetheless, for hardcore industry types, whether you think or bleed blue or red, small is beautiful. And, and if the economics, um, as if people mattered, uh, well, that's a, a, a good mantra to live by, a philosophy that you should examine and build upon. Now, philosophy and politics aside, when you fracture a tight shale formation, you pump water and sand into the rock. The sand is called propant, and it stays behind to hold the fractures that are created so that oil and gas can flow into the well bore. The problem with sand, well, it's straightforward. It's dense. It packs inefficiently and moves around in the fracture. And that can limit how deep and how effective that you, what kind of production you can get from a well. Exxon Mobil solution sits in its own refineries, far away from the well bores, on the coast of many countries where these refineries exist near ports. They produce petroleum coke in these refineries. This is a heavy hydrocarbon byproduct, and it's a natural part of the refining of crude uh, process, or crude oil. Historically, this material was fuel for industrial furnaces, maybe even bunker fuel. It's kind of a leftover sludge. Now, it's becoming the foundation of a propent mix, a, a design that's 40 to 50% lighter than sand. Now, why does, light, why does weight matter? Well, lighter particles suspend better in water, and they travel deeper when they're pumped into the fracture network when they're hydraulically fracturing in a, a well. They maintain permeability in zones that stand that sand completions cannot efficiently stimulate alone with just pure sand. The resulting is pretty amazing. First year production gains of 15 to 20% per well. 
in some cases exceeding 20%. Now let me put numbers to what that means in the field. ExxonMobil is now deploying this technology across more than 200 wells in the Permian Basin. Now that's translating to approximately 42,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day of incremental production compared to their sand-only completion baseline. That, that's equivalent to a mid-sized independent produ producer's entire output. Now we're still, or they're still early in the deployment of this technology in, in this phase. About 25% of their 2025 wells used petrocoke propant. Now, their management is targeting 50% of wells by the end of 2026. The economic impact extends beyond daily production numbers. Wood McKenzie's independent analysis found that this single innovation accounts for approximately $1 billion annually of what ExxonMobil calls Pioneer Synergies. That's Pioneer, the company they acquired. And they're, they're attributing the value created from the almost $60 billion acquisition of Pioneer Natural Resources. It's nearly one-third of the $3 billion total synergy package management is pursuing. Now, this is where the competitive advantage becomes durable. ExxonMobil has something that pure play independence, well, they just they can't easily replicate this because, well, proprietary chemicals are not their business or novel drilling techniques that, you know, that, that can't be done by anybody else but integrated oil companies unless they license or start providing this as a service to those independents. It's vertical integration uh, that ExxonMobil has. It feeds its refineries with heavy crude and bitumen. And that creates petroleum coke at roughly $20 per ton. A competitor seeking synthetic ceramic propants pays $500 to $1,000 per ton. Well, that's a cost differential that just doesn't disappear. I mean, it, it compounds across hundreds of wells and thousands of barrels over the productive life of, of these assets or, or oil and gas reservoirs. Now look at the implications for reserve life in the broader energy trajectory. Peter Zeehan calls it the fourth shale revolution. The first revolution was horizontal drilling and multi-stage fracturing, which unlocked tight gas. The second shale revolution applied those tools to oil. And then the third was the infrastructure build-out, where refineries, pipeline networks, and export terminals became part of the picture. Now, the fourth is super major scale integration and proprietary technology that's affecting the productive life of unconventional reserves. The U.S. currently produces roughly 13.8 million barrels per day. That represents a structural achievement, not just, you know, not just a cyclical peak. Production has grown half a million to one million barrels annually for 16 consecutive years. The conventional forecast was that U.S. shale production would eventually peak and decline. Incremental improvements and in recovery factors per well change that calculation. The pet coke and other efficiency technologies deliver sustained recovery improvements. The production plateau extends years longer. Peak production potentially moves from 2027 toward 2030 or beyond. For ExxonMobil's Permian portfolio specifically, management targets 2.3 million barrels per day by 2030. That's roughly a doubling from 2024 levels. The pet coke propant technology is expected to account for nearly one third of that growth.
meaning approximately 195,000 barrels per day of the incremental production in their 2030 target originates from superior fracture geometry and recovery efficiency enabled by petroleum coke rather than exploration or acreage acquisition. Now, the stock market has been skeptical. The announcement that came in, 20, in December of 2024, well, the initial reaction was negative. The market questioned scalability. It raised concerns about third-party validation. And only after Wood McKenzie provided independent confirmation of the 15 to 20% uplift did the narrative shift. Even then, broader market oil weakness and earnings missed overwhelmed the technological story. But as November 2025, ExxonMobil shares are up modestly, 3.7% from the announcement level, despite the magnitude of what's happening operationally. Now, the disconnect between operational reality and the stock performance matters for investors. The market is pricing pet coke as a marginal advantage worth roughly 5 to 10% of valuation premium over the next two to three years. The technology may prove more consequential than that. If competitors take two to three years to develop equivalent systems, and if pet coke deployment accelerates faster than currently anticipated, the operational leverage compounds faster than the market is assuming. But there are real constraints. Pet coke production is limited by refinery complexity and crude slate. Environmental regulations are tightening around uncontrolled pet coke calcalining plants. But most localized, uh, you know, this disadvantage continues, well, in communities like Louisiana and Texas, where it is quite permissible. If the EPA mandates pollution controls, processing costs increase and supply tightens. And oil price sensitivity does remain. Shale break-even economics are still vulnerable below $50 per barrel. At current WTI around $62 per barrel, pet coke enhanced wells are they're still profitable but margin compression follows commodity weakness quickly. The real story here is the shale industry remains fundamentally dependent on scale economies and technical innovation. The companies that can integrate across the value chain, upstream drilling, completion engineering, downstream refining, well, they capture a structural advantage that pure play operators just can't match. ExxonMobil's petroleum coke propin isn't a revolutionary discovery. It's a disciplined capital deployment combined with existing assets being redeployed toward higher value applications. That's a pattern that should shape your thinking about the energy sector positioning over the next five to 10 years. Majors with integrated operations and technical depth can win. Specialists get squeezed unless they drive automation and cost discipline that rivals the super major advantage, like I've outlined here. I'm Mark Roach, and this is Future Wise Energy. Keep your wits about you, your eyes wide open, and be ready to improvise and revise your assumptions as the operational results accumulate.